Hello everyone, my name is Olivia and today I wanted to do a very casual chit chat type of video while I drink a cup of coffee and it is iced coffee because your coffee can't get cold if you already put ice in it. I have no particular idea as to what I'm going to do in this video. I have been in a filming rut for a while now so I just wanted to get on here and talk to you about three different things and it's kind of like Scrooge so it's like the books of my past, the books of my present, and the books of my future. If you have not seen A Christmas Carol, it's fine, you're not missing out on anything. But basically I want to tell you about books that I recently read a book that I'm currently reading and two books that I plan on reading and just catch you up on my reading because I don't really have any filming ideas currently so I wanted to do this and this is loosely inspired by CJ Reads. I know that she has done this before and she was just very chatty and very casual about it in talking about the books that she has recently consumed and I really loved that idea. I just really loved how personable it was so I wanted to do that for myself. So let's talk about the books that I have recently read and then we'll get into everything else. Now I have to go on to Goodreads to check what I recently read because I hold no thoughts in my head, only internal screaming. So the past month has been a mixed bag in terms of reading. I have read some one star reads and I have read some 4.5 star reads. I'm gonna talk about three books because I don't want this to become a books and brews. Some of them might be mentioned in a future books and brews, others I probably will never mention again. So let's talk about Neon Gods by Katie Robert. Neon Gods is an adult romance centered around Hades and Persephone. They kind of live in a modern world where all of these gods are actually elected. So Hades was elected to be Hades and Persephone is getting into a sticky situation because she is being forced to marry Zeus and she does not like Zeus. He is famous for killing off his previous wives and she thinks she's going to be his next victim so she decides to run away and she ends up in Hades's underworld. So I am a sucker for Hades and Persephone retellings. I can never read enough of them. It's one of my favorite things to pick up so I was very excited to read this because so many people on book talk were hyping up this book and were like really gushing and raving about it and I really liked it too. I thought it was enjoyable. I thought the romance was great. I loved the way that Katie just brought these characters to life in a very unique way where it didn't have like a fantastical world. I do have to say it didn't completely blow me away. For Hades and Persephone retellings, I never seem to give one five stars because they're just never what I'm looking for in a Hades and Persephone retelling. And don't ask me what I'm looking for because I don't know until I find it. But I just think that this one was convoluted towards the end in terms of the plot with Zeus. I did not care about him at all and I just kind of only cared about the romance between Hades and Persephone. I would have been so much happier if it was just a romance between Hades and Persephone. You don't have to give me a plot. I would have been happier without one. If you have any Hades and Persephone retellings that you have to recommend to me that you think I would really enjoy, please put them down below. But I do want to say that I am going to continue reading Katie Roberts' books. I know she has an entire series about the Disney villains as love interests, and I am so excited to read those because I know she has another Hades novel following the Hades from Hercules, the Disney movie. So I'm excited to see what she does with him. Maybe I'll like that one a little bit more. Maybe the plot will be a little bit more engaging. The next Next book that I am so mad I spent hours upon hours listening to was The Silent Patient. So many people either love The Silent Patient or hate The Silent Patient. The Silent Patient is a thriller mystery. I wouldn't really call it a thriller because I was not thrilled. I did not find it to be thrilling whatsoever, so I'm going to call it a mystery. The Silent Patient follows a woman named Alicia, and she is found by the police in front of her husband who was shot in the face multiple times and the police arrest her and she was put into a mental institution and she does not speak. Nobody knows why she did this. So then we follow Theo who is a therapist and he eventually gets to work with Alicia and try and figure out why she did this crime. My Goodreads review literally just says this was a waste of my fucking time because let me tell you, I am so annoyed that I just did not google the end of this book and DNF'd it. I don't call this a thriller because it's so boring. I feel like this novel could have been easily 100 pages. I did not care about their life. I did not care about their motives and their like backstories and who they were in a relationship with. It was just such a boring story. And then when the plot twist hit, I was so annoyed with the story. I was like, 
sure that happened like that could have happened and i feel like if you are interested in it but you have similar taste to me and you think you won't enjoy it literally just google what the plot twist is and that's how the book goes you don't have to read the book it was a waste of time and I'm so mad about it, but I think it's interesting that I so aggressively hate The Silent Patient, but I absolutely loved The Maidens, which is this author's sophomore novel. I loved The Maidens. I thought it was so good. I thought the intrigue was there. I loved the mystery. I was hooked onto every single chapter that we had in the story, and I loved the plot twist for that as well. So it's a very different type of review for this author. I will either hate his work or love his work, so I think it's very interesting. And when he comes out with a third novel, I will gladly pick it up to see if it falls under the Maidens category with greatness or a complete waste of my fucking time. And another book that I recently read was Harbor by Rebecca Weatherspoon. This is the third novel in the trilogy in the Beards and Bondage series that I have been loving. That is the first trilogy that introduced me to Rebecca Weatherspoon and I just think she is such a phenomenal romance writer. If you are looking for some authentic, engaging romance to read that's very quick to go through, Rebecca Weatherspoon's novels are amazing. The way that she writes their banter is something that I just always compare other romance writers to because I just love the way that she brings these characters to life. I really enjoyed Harbor. I did not enjoy it as much as Sanctuary and Haven, which is the first novel in the trilogy, but it was still very enjoyable and I just really enjoyed following these characters. And it also follows a polyamorous relationship, so I thought that was really cool because I've never read about that before. So I just thought it was a really good romance. It didn't completely blow me away the way Sanctuary and Haven did, but I still really enjoyed it. So if you have not checked out Rebecca Weatherspoon, you simply must because her romances are amazing and they're so much better than the mainstream romances I see people reading because I've tried those and they're not as good as indie romances. Like you have to give indie romances a try because they are golden. It's like a gold mine of amazing romances that people just don't try. Give indie romances a try because they are amazing. As for the book that I am currently reading, I am only 8% through it and it is an audiobook and it's a 15 hour audiobook and it is The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. I am only reading this book because one, a friend recommended it to me on Instagram and two, Tom Hiddleston has such a grip on my heart that he can star in any book to movie adaptation and I will immediately either watch it or pick up the book. So I found out that Tom Hiddleston is going to be in the TV adaptation for The Essex Serpent. It's going to be a mini series, and the moment that I found that out, I was like, I have to read The Essex Serpent because I want to know what the book is about before I see the show because anything that Tom Hiddleston is going to star in, I'm going to watch because he owns my mind, body, and soul. So here I am, reading The Essex Serpent. Do I know what The Essex Serpent is about? No, I just know that Tom Hiddleston is starring in the TV show and I'm here, I'm reading it, I'm here for him. I'm always here to support him. Let me read you the synopsis because I clearly cannot summarize it for you other than saying Tom Hiddleston is going to star in the adaptation. So it says, an exquisitely talented young British author makes her American debut with this rapturously acclaimed historical novel set in late 19th century England about an intellectually minded young widow, a pious vicar, and a rumored mythical serpent that explores questions about science, religion, skepticism, and faith, independence, and love. I'm finding it very very hard to get into so far, but it is 15 hours, so clearly it's going to be a pretty high curve that I have to get over to get into the story. So I think once I hit around 10% or maybe even like 15%, I think my intrigue will peak a little bit more. In case you didn't know, Tom Hiddleston is going to star in the TV show. Have I mentioned that before? I don't think I've mentioned that before. Before we move on, can we talk about the fact that my fiddly fig Humphrey Bogart grew two new leaves? Here they are. Can you see me wiggling them? I'm so proud because Humphrey Bogart did not grow for, I think, a year. I think I've had him for a year. And I was like, are you okay? Are you secretly a fake plant? Let me know. And I started watering him a little bit more. And I think that's what he needed to like really kickstart his growth. And I'm just, I'm just so proud of Humphrey Bogart, you know? Like I thought he didn't like being in that spot and he was going to die. But turns out he likes that spot. So 
there we go. But that aside, let me tell you about two books that I am planning on reading because I'm not reading anything physically. So I think what I'm going to do is read the first chapter of each novel and figure out which one intrigues me a little bit more and then I will read the rest of the novel. That's a long-winded way of saying here are two books that I want to read. <laughs> Let's start with the first one that is more appropriate for the time and it is Ally Smith's Summer. I have not read an Ally Smith novel before but I have heard a lot of good things about her novels and I've also seen her covers everywhere because they're very iconic and uniform and she has written four novels following each season throughout the year. So we have summer, winter, spring, and fall. And I will be honest, I have no idea what summer is about. I just knew I wanted to read it, you know? You ever just look at a book? <laughs> I swear this video is getting more unhinged the more I go on because I don't know what I'm talking about. But you ever just look... <laughs> You ever just look at a book? I hate myself. You ever look at a book and you're like, I don't know what you're about, but I want to read you. Why is this making me crack up? You ever just look at a book and you look at the cover and you think, I want to read you. I really don't care what you're about. Your cover is beautiful. Let me buy you. That was me with Ally Smith's Summer. I just thought it was beautiful. I'm born during the summer, sadly, and I thought this was a good place to start with her novels. So let me read you a piece of the synopsis because I clearly don't know what I'm talking about and I think the synopsis will do a better job for me. So it says, this is a story about people on the brink of change. They're family, but they think they're strangers. So where does family begin? And what do people who think they've got nothing in common have in common? summer. So this follows multiple points of views and people are saying it's political, it's explosive, it's beautifully written, and I didn't know that this author was Scottish so I thought that was really cool to mention as well. And I don't know, I'm really excited to read it, it has big font, and like I said, you ever just look at a novel and think, I want to read you. I should write a novel, that's how poetic I am. And the other book that I wanted to read that has really piqued my interest that I got on a whim when I went to Vermont, I will link my Vermont vlog down below because I went to a bunch of different bookstores. It was essentially like bookstore hopping throughout the whole entire weekend that I was there and it was amazing and beautiful and Vermont has such beautiful bookstores and this is a book that I got at the Crow Bookshop and it is outlined by Rachel Cusk. And I have seen Rachel Cusk's novel all over Instagram because her covers are beautiful and very uniform as well as Ali Smith's and I recently saw Rachel Cusk's novels get recommended to me on my Kindle. There's like a part of your Kindle app where it says like based off of your reading you would like these books and they showed me one of her novels not this one because they didn't have that one in the store and I started looking at her novels and I thought they were really cool and like poetic. People said they're very introspective it's like a long form internal monologue and I love those types of stories. I just love a meandering type of read. And this is a novel following 10 different conversations and it follows a woman who is in Athens and I think she is a novelist. Yes, she is a novelist teaching a creative writing course over the hot summer in Athens. And this novel kind of chronicles this protagonist's life in Athens during the time that she is there and it reminded me a lot of one of my favorite reads, Bella Figura, which is a nonfiction about a woman who moves from England to Italy for the year and she just chronicles her life, her adventures, and the people that she meets in Italy. That's one of my favorite pieces of writing of all time and I thought it was so well written and so beautiful with not a lot going on because it's literally just a woman's life in Italy. So this is about a woman's life in Athens and the people that she meets, the conversations that she sparks, and I think I'm going to love it. I know a lot of people said and they found it hard to follow along with, but I think I'll really enjoy it. And if it reminds me of Bella Figura, I think I will very much enjoy the writing style. This is a book that has really caught my eye in the past few weeks. So I'm going to try a chapter of each of these books and then see which one will win. I don't know which one will win. Let me know in the comments which one you think will win. Maybe I'll do a reading vlog for the novel that I end up picking. I think that would be really cool. But these are two books that have really caught my eye, have been on my TBR for maybe like a month or two and I really want to read, but I don't know which one to start first. So that my friends is the end of my very chaotic 
coffee chit chat type of video where I tell you about the books of my past, the books of my present, and the books of my future. Let me know if you enjoy these types of casual conversations where I don't really have anything specific planned but I just want to chat with you all. I think it's really fun, I think it's very casual, conversational, and lifts a weight off of my shoulders because I can't just continually recommend books all the time because I only read so many books in a year. So I have to do something a little bit more unique and I hope you enjoyed this type of video because it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more me, you know, because you're catching me off guard. I don't have anything planned out. I don't have a bullet list to follow. So here we are, drinking coffee, being chaotic, and we can't even blame the coffee because it's decaf. This is just my personality. You're welcome. Speaking of personalities, if you want to follow me anywhere else to see more of me in the future, you can follow me on my Instagram, TikTok, anything else, all that will be linked down below. Again, if you have any video ideas for me to film in the future, please put them down below. I love taking your video ideas into account. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. And if you have made it to the end of this video, leave a coffee emoji down below, of course, to commemorate this wonderful video that i just created for you i will see you in another video very soon bye